Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF qualified author and doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I am again back with a very very interesting topic. What is the key difference between design FMA and process FMA? So when we talk about FMA in general, it's nothing but a risk analysis tool. And the idea is to identify what can be the possible risk, what are the causes for it, what impact it can have and what are the present controls and what needs to be done to manage it. If I take a simple example, if you are going out of station with your family, so in general, you know, we do a sort of an FME, we try to find out that what can be the possible failure modes. It can be with respect to the money that we are carrying with us, it can be with respect to the vehicle by which we are traveling, it can be with respect to the weather and there can be many more possible failure modes. And then we also try to analyze that what can be the impact of that and what needs to be done with respect to that and accordingly you know you take some actions before going ahead with that so that's all primarily in short about fma and in this particular video i'm going to talk about what is fma what are the different kinds of fma like dfma and process fma what are their key objectives what are the commonalities between design fma and process fma what are the key differences between design FME and process FME? And finally, what are the challenges that industry is facing with respect to the entire FME process? So, before talking about FME, let me tell you that the latest edition of FME that is at the moment is that is called FME AIG VDA Handbook First Edition, which came in the month of June 2019. And that superseded the previous version of fourth edition of FME that came in year 2008. So when we talk about the definition of FME, so by definition, FME is a team oriented, systematic and qualitative and analytical method to analyze and to find out that what can be the possible technical risk related to the product and the manufacturing process and what needs to be done with respect to that. If we bifurcate failure mode and effect analysis in two parts, then when we talk about failure mode, our intent is to identify what can be the possible ways in which something can go wrong and how it is going to affect the customer and what can be the potential for that. And when we talk about effect analysis, our intent is to identify that what are the consequences with respect to these failures. In general, the basic thumb rule is that FMEA is before the event and not after the event activity. So it's very important for an organization to understand that they need to make FMEA before they are starting any particular activity, not a post-mortem kind of thing. Now moving further to talk about what exactly is DFMEA and what are the key objectives. So when we talk about DFMEA, our main intent is to understand that what can be the potential, potential system related and failures and once we identify those failures, we also need to identify what can be its impact and outcome on the product with respect to that. So that's all we discuss with respect to the design FMEA. So the one of the key objective of design FMEA is to identify what are the potential product related failures. Say for example, the product mall function, the shortened product lifetime and thirdly the safety hazards while using the product. These are some of the key things which are considered with respect to design FMEA. When we talk about process FMEA, process failure mode and effect analysis, our main intent is that with the help of a cross-functional team we identify what are the different risks that are related to the processes and what needs to be done with respect to that. Some of the key process failures that an organization can think about or possibly are there. First of all, it is what are the process inefficiencies and what needs to be done with respect to that. Why the cost of poor quality is so high and what needs to be done with respect to that. And what can be the safety hazards that an organization can have with respect to the processes. Now to talk about some of the commonalities between design FME and process FME, the first and the foremost is that both design FME and process FME are the live document. Secondly, the severity always remains the same in DFME and process FME when the failure effects are same. And thirdly, when the product failure affects the end user, same thing should be interlinked while making the PFME also. And fourth and the last 
that as I said earlier also both DFME and process FME are before the event exercise and not later on. Now to talk about some of the key challenges that industry is facing with respect to or maybe some of the key differences between design FME and process FME. So when we talk about design FME, the key focus is on the product quality. And when we talk about process FME, the key focus is on the reliability and efficient manufacturing process. Generally, we are linking DFME with APQP, then it is with the second phase of APQP, which is related to the product design and development process. When we talk about PFME, it is related with the third phase of APQP, advanced product quality planning, which is process design and development process phase. When we talk about DFME, it is basically in the initial stages of the product design process. When we talk about process FME, it is always or it should be initiated before planning for the tooling or before going ahead with the manufacturing process design. Before that, we need to do a process FME. Generally, when we talk about DFME, it's focusing on the design problems, while PFME is focusing on the process related problems. When we talk about design FME, its main focus is to see that at system level, subsystem level and the component level, what can be the design failures. Say for example, let me take an example of this particular pen. When we are trying to understand that what can be the design failure at the system level, we are talking about the complete pen. But when we talk about subsystem level, then it means if we open it and we see some inner parts or assembly of it, that is called subsystem part. But when we talk about component level, then we are talking about the spring or maybe a particular knob and a particular clip that what can be the possible failure with respect to that, that is a part of the component level. But when we talk about process FME, so in process FME, our intent is to understand that what can be the possible failures in the production process, in the assembly process, in the logistics process. Some of the key inputs related to DFME include P diagram which is parameter diagram, block diagram and the bill of material. But when we talk about the key inputs related to process FME, it includes the output of design FME, process flow chart as well as the output which is coming from design FME. One thing which is very important to understand here is that not all the organizations are product design responsible. So in that case, they will not be making design FME. They will be getting all the inputs from the customer and based on that, they will be making process FME. So when we talk about design FME, the next step or the output of design FME is design verification plan and the report as well as the process FME. But when we talk about process FME, the next step is the process control plan. When we talk about design FME, it does not rely upon the process controls that what kind of process controls are there and that will take care of the product design that has never been considered. Similarly, when we talk about process FME, at that time they always assume that the product design is good and there will not be any issue with respect to that. To talk about some of the key challenges that industry is facing with respect to the FME process, the first and the single most important thing is even though the last or the latest edition has come in 2019 June, how many organizations have actually implemented the latest version of FME or they are still continuing with the older version of 2008? Second, and the very important thing is, how often the organizations link the effectiveness of their FME with the cost of poor quality. That when an organization is implementing FME, whether the cost of poor quality is getting reduced or not. If you are not linking, or if the cost of poor quality is not getting reduced, so it means our FME process is not effective. Thirdly, it's also important to understand that whatever beautiful tables, fancy tables that we make in DFME and PFME, whether it is actually to serve some purpose or just to impress the auditors, visitors and the customers. And finally, the fourth and the most important thing is in how many organizations FME is still a live document and not a dead document. So if I do a summary again with respect to the key differences between DFME and PFME, so when we talk about DFME, it's focusing on the quality of the product. It is linked with the second phase of the APQP process. It focuses on the design related problem and it analyzes the product at system, subsystem and the component level. And some of the key inputs related to DFME includes 
block diagram, P diagram and bill of material. But when we talk about process FMEM, so basically our intent is to see that our manufacturing process is reliable and efficient. It is linked with the third phase of the APQP and generally FMEA is initiated before planning for the tooling and the manufacturing processes. And some of the key potential failures related to process FMEA are related to logistics process, manufacturing process, assembly process and other things. And some of the key inputs related to PFMEA includes and the output of design FME and drawings, process flow chart and other things. So this is all about the key differences between design FME and process FME. My next video will be again related to the same series of FME and that will be about the key difference between failure mode and failure effects. I'm regularly getting a lot of feedbacks from your side and they're helping me to understand what are your expectations. So please do continue that. And in case you want to understand this particular video a little bit more in detail. So if you see there's a link below, if you click that, you'll find a blog there and there you will find in this particular information in much more detail. And in case you're liking these kind of videos and blogs, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website bhavimangla.com. Thank you.